A reporter for the right-wing network Newsmax asked at a White House briefing if Joe Biden is woke. Marjorie Taylor Greene said whales are being killed by wind turbines and a Fox host claimed pot smoke is an environmental disaster. All while an actual environmental disaster, the catastrophic train derailment in Ohio continues to upend the lives of residents and pose significant health risks. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Ever since Donald Trump emerged on the political scene, Republicans have tried to rebrand themselves as a populist party that represents the interests of blue-collar, working-class Americans. The forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. We are a pro-America, populist party rooted in conservative principle with Donald Trump as our leader. We're in favor of an America first economic policy, an America first foreign policy, and that means doing what's good for the American worker. The Republican Party is the party of steel workers and construction workers and pipeline workers and taxi cab drivers and cops and firefighters and waiters and waitresses and the men and women with calluses on their hands. Oh, I have calluses on my ears just listening to that. <laughs> my God, man, have you heard your own voice? Ted Cruz is like the dude in your high school band who insists on taking lead vocals. Don't worry, guys, I got this. <laughs> it's been one week since you looked at me. <laughs> just listing off a bunch of random blue collar jobs like you got them from a Richard Scary book. We need to protect our construction workers, our firefighters, <laughs> and our worms who drive apple cars. <laughs> You can tell he's just making it up as he goes because he left off so many other jobs like truckers, teachers, nurses, retail workers, farmers. Although he did mention taxi cab drivers because he has personal experience with them. Hey, back to the airport, Mr. Cruz. Must be a snowstorm coming. <laughs> and yeah, even in Texas, the taxi drivers talk like that. <laughs> okay, dude. Of course, I probably don't need to tell you that faux populism was all a show. In the four years Trump held office, Republicans accomplished exactly one thing of note, which was an extravagant tax cut that lavished millions on the wealthy and corporations. And then, when they won a narrow majority in the House and made it through an excruciating series of votes to elect a new speaker, Republicans had a chance to finally prove their new working class bona fides. Instead, one of their first hearings was about this. You may have collaborated with the U.S. intelligence community regarding stories that y'all didn't want the public to see. So namely, what we refer to as the Hunter Biden laptop story. Hunter Biden's lawyers, as recently as last week, wrote the Department of Justice about Hunter Biden's laptop. The substance of Hunter Biden's laptop story. FBI subpoenaed Hunter Biden's laptop. Regarding Hunter Biden's laptop. Hunter Biden's laptop. Hunter Biden 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 laptop. Maybe Hunter Biden's laptop is the GOP's safe word. They're repeating it. <laughs> Like an undercover cop who's in danger? Hey, what are you talking about? I'm not a cop, I'm a drug dealer, just like you. On his laptop, on his laptop, on his laptop. <laughs> Get me out of here, I'm on a laptop. <laughs> That's because Republicans have no discernible governing agenda. They claim they're the party of the working class, but they don't actually have any ideas for or interest in improving the lives of working class people. And you can see that in the GOP's reaction to the catastrophic train derailment and ensuing environmental disaster in Ohio. Train carrying chemicals, including a toxic flammable gas called vinyl chloride, derailed near the Ohio-Pennsylvania border earlier this month. That, in turn, started a fire, and then they had to do a, a sort of controlled release of some of those chemicals, which blanketed the town of East Palestine, Ohio, in noxious smoke. About 50 cars operated by Norfolk Southern came off their track and crumpled into a smoldering pile. Ten of the cars carried hazardous materials, according to the rail operator. The vinyl chloride in particular is highly flammable, and crews ignited it to burn it off in what they called a controlled environment. That in turn produced a huge plume of smoke, and with it, serious health and environmental concerns. There have been numerous reports in recent days of respiratory issues, burning eyes, and dead wildlife, including at least 3,500 confirmed dead fish killed by contamination. We basically nuked a town with chemicals so we could get a railroad open. Holy a mushroom cloud of toxic chemicals was released over an entire town, killing thousands of fish and causing respiratory issues. Of course, when Republicans see a plume of gray smoke, their first thought is, dear God, did someone open... Hunter Biden's laptop? Obviously. <laughs> this is a catastrophe that demands urgent action, and the residents of East Palestine must 
get all the help and resources they need. And the rail company responsible, Norfolk Southern, which is worth over $50 billion, is under intense public pressure to do more. For example, after an initial $25,000 donation to the community, the company said they would give $1,000 inconvenience checks to residents within the evacuation. I'm sorry, a one Thousand dollar inconvenience check? Having to flee your home to avoid a mushroom cloud of toxic chemicals is not an inconvenience. It's a disaster. An inconvenience is when you get stuck in the rain and can't hail a taxi cab. <laughs> Yay! No need to yell, Mr. Cruz. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Dallas. <laughs> Now, Norfolk Southern has announced a new round of financial assistance to help residents pledging at least $1 million, but that still pales in comparison to how much cash the company has. Just a few weeks ago, the company reported the fourth quarter railway operating revenue was $3.2 billion, up 13%, and income from railway operations was $1.2 billion, up 5%. That's billion with a B, and they expect residents to be happy with $1 million when they announced the Community Relief Fund, and they say, great news, everyone. You're getting a grand total of... One million dollars. <laughs> and by the way, rail workers and their unions have been warning for years about deteriorating safety conditions and demanding better work standards. Instead, these massively profitable rail companies poured money into stock buybacks and dividends and lobbied for safety regulations to be repealed. For example, in 2018, the Trump administration rolled back a train-breaking rule meant to keep oil tankers from exploding near communities. I mean, of course he did. And <laughs> I'm sure we didn't hear about it because it was the same day he tried to buy Greenland or challenged Angela Merkel to a putting contest or drank water weird. We've <laughs> been done a disservice by movies that taught us evil guys were all geniuses and scientists. And we forgot, you can be an evil dummy in a ball cap that doesn't fit. What else did Trump do while we weren't looking? I wouldn't be shocked to read a headline that said, Trump rolls back rule meant to keep dastardly villains from tying damsels in distress to railroad tracks. We don't have damsels anymore, and it's very sad. It's very sad. <laughs> because with no damsels, the villains don't have anyone to tie to their tracks, and you see... And now you see the villains, they're just milling about in the train station with their big heads. <laughs> and they have a big coil of rope with no one to tie to anything. And... One of the villains came up to me, tall guy, evil guy, tears running down his face and then shooting down his handlebar mustache like it was a water slide. <laughs> tears flying up and then down. <laughs> and he said to me, sir, please make it easier for trains to explode near communities. So there's a lot of actual policy Republicans could be discussing right now, like we could force wealthy companies to pay for cleanups after disasters, or we could impose stiffer financial penalties, we could tax them more and redistribute that money to workers and safety improvements, require electric braking systems, or maybe we could reimpose some of those silly little regulations designed to, you know, stop trains from exploding. Instead, Republicans like Marjorie Taylor Greene are saying stuff like this. We have people like Ilhan Omar. She wants to, you know, crack down on corporate greed when it comes to rails and the privately owned sections of rails. But really what we have to do is we have to make sure that our rails are safe. Now, on one hand, it makes sense that Greene would blame Ilhan Omar for this because she blames Ilhan Omar for everything. I'm certain when Marjorie's name is spelled wrong under Starbucks cup, she stares up at the sky and yells, Ilhan! <laughs> Also, I bet the most common misspelling of Marjorie she gets is this. <laughs> but it is, in fact, possible to crack down on corporate greed and make sure the rails are safe, especially since rail industry donors delivered more than $6 million to GOP campaigns before Trump rolled back the breaking rules. And yet, instead of spending her time talking about any of that, Green used part of an interview on Fox last night to repeat a debunked right-wing talking point that windmills are killing whales. I don't know why AOC isn't dressed in white and crying for the dead whales that keep washing on the beach um, from wind farms that are being placed all over the ocean. Now, this conspiracy theory claims the construction of offshore wind farms is fatal to whales, which there is no evidence of. But my first reaction when I heard that was, does Marjorie Taylor Greene think whales can fly? <laughs> Has she been staring at the new unidentified objects on her computer saying, enhance, enhance? <laughs> Enhance. I knew it! <laughs> and that wasn't the only bizarre take Green had on the train derailment. She unfurled a long Twitter thread on Monday that was supposed to be about the derailment and what caused it, but she got so far afield that 15 tweets into the thread, here's where she ended up. Again, this is from a Twitter thread that was supposed to be about a train derailment. 
There are also many young Americans who spend their days dazed from using marijuana all day and unfortunately confused. Not everyone can work or think very well while they are stoned all day, and for some, it even creates more mental problems. We aren't all the same, folks. No, we <laughs> definitely are not. <laughs> you think pot had something to do with the train derailment in Ohio? We all know there's only one train who smokes pot, and it's the one narrated by Ringo Starr. <laughs> I'm on to you, Thomas. <laughs> you guys, do I have, like, a human face? And somehow she wasn't the only conservative to bring up marijuana in the context of the train derailment. Fox host Laura Ingram had this to say in a monologue about what she called the real environmental killers. And then there's drug legalization. Liberals push to legalize marijuana, high THC content, and even hard drugs is an unfolding societal and environmental disaster. How is pot use an environmental disaster? If anything, pot smoke promotes appreciation of the natural world. Have you ever gotten high and seen a rainbow? It'll blow your goddamn mind, I guarantee. <laughs> if Laura Ingram took one bong rip and then lay down on a blanket under the stars at a national park, she'd move to Santa Monica, wear a beanie, and join Greenpeace. <laughs> Republicans seem to have no real solutions for a situation like the train derailment in Ohio other than culture war nonsense. Take Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, who said this on Fox. The problem we have, Tucker, is that we are ruled by unserious people who are worried about fake problems instead of the real fact that our country is falling apart in some of the most important ways. You mentioned the Environmental Protection Agency. Of course, it says it right there. It should be focused on clean air, clean water. It's the thing that I'm most focused on for the people of East Palestine, but so often they're focused on environmental racism and other ridiculous things instead of fixing the problem that they are established to fix. I'm sorry, you think Democrats are unserious people worried about fake problems? On that exact same network, a day later, a lady in your party said whales are getting killed by windmills. Now, <laughs> Tucker, instead of worrying about fake problems like environmental racism, we need to be focused on real problems, like how solar panels are frying bald eagles like rotisserie chickens. <laughs> and by the way, good faith criticism of Democrats would be fine. They're the ones in power. It is very fair to hold their feet to the fire about this. It took Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg 10 days to tweet about the disaster. And Biden hasn't yet committed to reinstating the safety rule Trump repealed. And that dude loves trains. I would think if a train went off the rails anywhere in America, Amtrak Joe would sit bolt upright in bed in a cold sweat. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. The one thing Biden voters thought they could count on was for you to be on top of the train stuff. When Bill Kidd was president, there wasn't a single saxophone-related disaster. <laughs> well, other than the time he played it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna watch seven miles tonight. I'm probably safe. <laughs> Did I do Jimmy Carter instead of Bill Clinton, I think? <laughs> hey, I'm from Dallas. <laughs> Some nights you can't find it, guys. <laughs> Important thing. The important thing is it all happened because we wanted to burn him for that. <laughs> uh, well, there we go. <laughs> you guys, you know what's fun is sometimes uh, this all happens and I look over and Wally is just very passive aggressively tapping where I am on the card. <laughs> But Republicans aren't talking about substance. They're talking about culture war nonsense like marijuana and environmental racism because the conservative movement has no real policy agenda. They have nothing concrete to offer. And that can be best summed up by this ridiculous clip from yesterday where a White House correspondent for the conservative network Newsmax asked this absurd question. One of the most prominent themes that we hear from both elected Republicans and, and candidates um, has to do with uh, what is called wokeism. I wonder if we couldn't begin with a threshold question to wit, is President Biden woke? I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Is that Woodward or Bernstein? <laughs> also, you think Joe Biden is woke? If it's past 5 p.m., he's probably not even awake, let alone woke. <laughs> Is Joe Biden woke has to be one of the dumbest questions ever asked at a White House press conference. And I'm including the time a reporter asked if windmills should be illegal. Although, personally, I thought the reporter looked a little suspicious. <laughs> to wit. The catastrophic train derailment and ensuing environmental disaster are a perfect example of the kind of thing a serious governing party should have answers for. Absolutely true. The Democrats can and should do more. 
Meanwhile, Republicans are talking about culture war, BS, and whales getting killed by windmills like they all took a huge hit of marijuana. This has been A Closer Look.